What's up? Um, I'm at the shop, TA, uh, getting a trailer worked on. So much drama, so little time. Um, where to start? So TA messed up. The night crew, I think, was all high. And uh, the people I dealt with when I checked in here at 7 p.m. yesterday, Saturday, um, they, they acted like they were stoned. And they misplaced... They didn't do the work orders correctly. They misplaced everybody's work order. So the, the crew for today that just showed up is having to deal with all of the problems that the, the crew from last night created. Um, I never got called in. Um, so after 14 hours at 9 a.m., now they told me there were like five people ahead of me last night. So I didn't expect to be called right away, but man, 14 hours. So 9 a.m. this morning, I went over there and I was like, what the hell's going on? And they were, and the, the day shift people told me that, uh, you know, they just basically, they didn't put my work order together properly. So the day shift people today had no idea that I was waiting. So uh, they told me to go ahead and pull up to a bay and that they have all their mechanics out on road calls right now, but they'll get over to me. Um, whenever they get back from road calls, they told me to go ahead and, you know, back into Bay 9, which is where I'm at right now. I'm at the TA in Denton. So why am I in the shop? Bad trailer. So I made the, I dropped my load at uh, Waxahachie, the Waxahachie terminal that they just opened up. Right now it's just a drop yard. They have not fully opened up the Waxahachie terminal. Um, it's just a drop yard. They have a couple of security guards there manning the gates because the gate, the gates don't operate properly right now. And uh, I dropped the trailer there and there were no empties. I went around in circles with the driver managers, having them locate an empty for me. They didn't want to locate an empty for me because I was going home. They were like, just don't worry about it right now. We'll worry about it whenever you leave your house. And I'm like, no. There are no empties anywhere near Oklahoma City. I want it, like I'm in Dallas right now. There's empties everywhere here. Get me an empty here. That way, you know, I don't I don't want to have to deadhead, you know, a couple hundred miles to find an empty when I leave Oklahoma City. It just it screws everything up. It would take me a whole video to explain how like much it sucks and like the position it puts me in when I'm bobtail at my house. Um I've had like three loads canceled off of me trying to leave the house before uh, because they couldn't find empties for me. Um, but anyway, they finally told me of a place I can go pick up an empty, some food place uh, in Grand Prairie, Texas. I get there, I let them know that I was I'm there to steal an empty, and they're like, "Man, you guys keep you just keep just just keep taking our empties." And I'm like, "Ah, that sucks." And then I went out and. Uh, Look through their empties. I found three USA truck empties. One of the first things I do is check paperwork. So trailer number one that I looked at, I opened up a paperwork box and it was empty. I looked for some other paperwork box because sometimes they'll install the little the little round one uh, on the trailer and put the paperwork in that instead. Nope, no paperwork with the trailer. No vehicle inspection report, no registration. And uh, FMCSA, DOT, all of them, they still require physical copies. Digital copies don't do it. Uh, they, they don't accept digital right now. Hopefully they will in the future, but as of right now, they require that you have a physical copy of the registration. Now, the vehicle inspection report, it is not required that you have the vehicle inspection report on the truck. Um, you have to have something on the truck that states that it passed an inspection and when and the actual inspection report has to be kept on file for a certain number of time or a certain length of time it, do, it doesn't tell you that you have to have it in the truck it tells you have to have it on file somewhere so if you just simply have a sticker on the trailer that says that it passed an inspection on such and such date that is sufficient you don't have to have the actual inspection report um, in the truck but if you don't have a sticker that says something like that then you need the actual inspection report on the truck I didn't have any of that shit on it so no inspection report 
Uh, no registration, nothing on the trailer, no paperwork at all. So I stopped my inspection right there and went to the next trailer. Next trailer I got to, I didn't even make it to the point where I looked for paperwork. Um, just looking at the trailer when I got there, the landing gear was fucked up and it had a big dent in the side of it. Somebody had hit something with it and somebody looked like they had driven around with the landing gear down. The landing gear was bent in on both sides. Uh, like both landing gear uh, legs were bent inward and then the feet were all fucked up. They'd been hitting shit with the feet. And then the cross member supports were, uh, because the landing gears, you know, were both bent inward, it had popped forward and was uh, sticking out forward. Um, I would say each side of the landing gear was bent in about 8 to 12 inches. Um, so I was like, well, I'm not touching that shit. So I went to the, the last trailer, which is the one I have. And uh, all I could find wrong with it is that the mud flaps are not properly mounted and they're not uh, low enough. They're too high off the ground. Somebody just cut out some pieces of rubber or plastic and bolted them on to the mud flap holder. They didn't use um, a mud flap kit. They didn't use washers or anything. Just nut and bolt um, and threw a piece of rubber or plastic or whatever. Uh, onto the mud flap holders and they're about 14 inches off the ground um, real quick on the mud flaps on the mud flap height eight inches eight inches is what you should go by fmcsa on a national level does not tell you exactly how high the mud flaps can be off the ground it, they, fmcsa just says that you must have mud flaps that block the majority of debris um, from the vehicle they leave it to states to designate specifics about uh, you know height requirements and stuff like that um, I don't remember which states I think it's Texas has the most restrictive um, but there are two states that I know of that uh, have a specific height requirement on mud flaps one of them is 10 inches and the other one's 8 inches I think Texas is the one that's 8 inches your mud flaps cannot be more than 8 inches off the ground uh, and these things are like 14 inches off the ground. So um, they need to replace the mud flaps. They need to, you know, install a mud flap kit to hold them on properly. Um, and the other issue is that my left rear outside tire on the trailer has a big hole in it. Um, now, it's not like flat or anything like that. It just looks like a bolt went into it. And then the bolt came out and it tore a chunk out of the tire. So about a quarter inch. Imagine the size of a normal bolt, like a pretty big bolt. Um, just going into the tire and then getting popped out and leaving a, a little circle behind. Um, one of the tires has that and the hole goes all the way down to the, um, to the recap. Um, you know how they shave the tire for a recap? Um, you can see that shaved part that that shaved portion down at the bottom on the recap So you can see bare metal so they need to replace tire replace two mud flaps um, And then I'm good to go it shouldn't take too terribly long, but Sorry uh, You know, I've been here forever waiting on this shit so um, You know I'm, I'm torn on this. This is this next part I'm about to say is it really pisses me off that these people at USA Truck, my fellow drivers here, leave behind trailers like this. All three of the empties there would not pass an inspection. Um, and this is the norm for USA Truck is dumbasses or assholes. I don't know which they are. Are they dumbasses in that they just don't know any better? Or are they assholes in that they know better and they're just leaving it behind for the next person? Well, obviously the landing gear person is an asshole and they should probably get fired. But I'm torn here because I hate to see anything bad happen to anyone, but I'm also really pissed off that there's some jackass working for the company that's fucking up these trailers and then just leaving them for the next person. 
not because of their ignorance. They're intentionally doing it because they're bad at their job and they're, you know, they don't want to deal with it or they don't want to get in trouble for it. So they're just dumping the problem on the next person. So what I did to try to minimize the impact, um, because I don't want to, you know, pull up to that grocery warehouse to pick up a load, a preloaded trailer, and I go there to hook up to the trailer, and it's this jacked up trailer where the landing gear's all fucked up. Um, and now at that point, we've got a loaded trailer with a messed up landing gear and a big dent in the front of it. And just a really messed up trailer that probably shouldn't have been loaded in the first place. And now it's that person's problem. That's not something you can take to TA to get fixed. You have to take that to a trailer repair place to get fixed. Um, and you might have to get it towed. Um, me personally, I would probably refuse to pull that trailer. I would tell them to get a damn tow truck out there to move that shit. Um, but, so what I did to try to minimize the impact that this is going to have on the next driver is I called roadside and I told them, um, about, you know, the trailers and, uh, they said that they would send somebody out to pick up the trailer with the bad landing gear. And they asked me to let the shipper know not to load it in the meantime. So, um, I let the shipper know that we were going to send somebody out to pick that trailer up and take it to a shop. And we're asking them to please not, uh, load it. Um, so hopefully that helped somebody out. They'll never know that I helped them out, but hopefully it helped somebody out. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm just sitting here waiting on them to get this done. As soon as this is done, I'm going to drive to, uh, Oklahoma city, drop my trailer at big rig product, and then go to the house, come back to big rig product on Monday morning, real early, like five, 6 AM. And, uh, it shouldn't take more than about an hour for them to fix everything with the truck. As long as there's no unexpected things like they cracked my fuel tank or something like that. I don't even want to think about that. Um, but I'm really hesitant to get a load off the load board right now without knowing like how long exactly it's going to take to get fixed because like I expected I was only going to be at the TA for a maximum of two hours. You know, maybe it might take them an hour to get me into a bay and then an hour to get it fixed. Nope. I've been here for like 15 hours at this point and it, they haven't even started working on it yet. So this is going to be like 16, 17 hours over replacing a damn tire and two mud flaps. Um, so you just never know how long any of these shops are going to take. So, uh, I'm hesitant to grab a load yet until my uh, truck is fixed because last time I had a load on me and I gave two days. Like I put my truck in the shop on Monday and I wasn't expecting to put my shop, my truck in the shop any other time aside from just Monday. But I ended up having to put my truck in the shop again on Tuesday. I had a Wednesday load that I thought would give me plenty of time to get my truck fixed. And it ended up putting me into this position that I'm in right now where once they finally finished uh, supposedly fixing my truck, I didn't have time and they didn't have time to properly test and make sure it was fixed because I had this load I had to go pick up. Um, they, I told them I had a load to pick up and, um, and like what they wanted me to do was come back the next day so they'd have plenty of time to work on it, work on it Wednesday. But they stayed like three and a half hours late Tuesday night to get me done Tuesday so that I go pick up that load on Wednesday and it put them in a rush it put me in a rush and neither of us properly tested it and as soon as I got out on the road I had all these problems I had to immediately try to find a way to get back um, so I'm really hesitant this time to grab a load until everything is tested and done and good to go so the position that's putting me in is that I might not actually leave the house this upcoming week because if they don't get you know fully tested and done and everything until uh, look at CRST he's pulling in the car entrance right now
And he's running over all kinds of shit. Now he's trying to back back out onto the road. I think he realized what he fucked up on. Um, you know, I was thinking about going over there and helping them by like stopping traffic, but there's two fucking people in that truck. They can get out and do that. I don't want to get involved in that cluster fuck. They're trying to back back out to the road. Yeah, the two of them are just like waving their arms around, talking to each other on what in the hell to do. Uh, they can't make that turn, but it looks like they're going to go ahead and drive up. Yeah, they're, they're going to go ahead and drive up over the curb. That's what they're trying to do is just drive over the curb, but their trailer can't make that turn, and it's going to go into the ditch, and they're going to get stuck. I think it's probably two students. Neither of them know what they're doing. So Okay, now they're, they're, they're doing what they should have done. Now they're backing out. I was about to run over there and tell them not to do that shit. They're going to create a bigger problem. But uh, you wonder why, you know, these trailers and these tractors, you know, you look at them, you're like, how the fuck did that happen? This is how that happens. All right, they got backed out. Now they're... Hopefully going to go around to the truck entrance. They may just give up on TA and go to the other truck stop. Let me see if they make that. Yeah, they're making that turn. They're going to come into the TA the correct way now. Oh, my goodness. You wonder why these trading companies have such a bad reputation? It's because that kind of stupid shit, you see it all day, every day. And what, what's really bad is these student drivers, when they get into a bad situation like that, They'll just get scared, and instead of, you know, correcting the situation, undoing it, they'll just keep pushing on, um, like that guy tried to do, and I think his co-driver talked him out of it, but he was just going to try, he was going to let the, the trailer go ahead and uh, go off into the grass over there, and hopefully make it across there. And it's a good thing that they, you know, his co-driver talked him out of it because it's just a, a huge drop-off right there. It's a big ditch. And his trailer would have gotten stuck. There's no way it would have uh, gone across that. <sighs> what were we talking about before CRST started trying to take over my damn YouTube channel? I think that's the second time I've caught CRST doing something really stupid when I was making a video. Really early on when I was in training, there was um, some dumbass that creatively parked in a ditch at the Loves in Wilmer, Texas. And um, they had to have a tow truck come and tow them out because it was a fucking ditch. And it was wet and muddy. And uh, they just saw an open patch of grass, and they were just like, oh, I'll park there. So they did, and then they couldn't get out, and they had to have a tow truck come get them. So I was making my, my video. I started making my video that day and looked over and saw all these flashing lights and everything, and I went over and started, uh, I think that was CRST. And while I was sitting there recording it, you know, doing my, my video, there was somebody in the truck next to me that jumped out and ran over there and uh, kind of like took over the video. And I had to just kind of like stop the video after his ranting and raving for a few minutes. Um, that happens to me a lot. Usually when I'm out here recording like this and somebody sees me, they'll run up and start talking to me. So I try to like stay away from people when I'm recording. Um, because if I'm anywhere near someone when I'm recording, they'll, they'll come over and like, start talking to me and shit even though they can see that I'm recording but uh I guess it's kind of like if they see you recording they think that you're a, a social person or something like that 
uh, what I equate it to is my motorcycle. When I'm in my, well, when I was in my Ford Escape, I had a Ford Escape. Um, nobody just randomly came up to me and started talking to me. Nobody would just randomly talk to me at stoplights. But on my motorcycle, everybody would just randomly, you know, just come up and start talking to me. People would talk to me at stoplights. Um, I don't know what it is about being on a motorcycle, but everybody just wanted to talk to me. Um, and in my, uh, my 370Z, my sports car, I don't have, I don't remember anybody trying to talk to me at a light, but like in drive throughs and stuff like that, people will talk to me and ask me about my car and tell me it looks pretty and stuff like that. I think that it's just, uh, I don't know, the, the people have a stereotype based on, you know, things. So if you're doing a certain thing or acting a certain way or driving a certain vehicle or something like that, they stereotype you into like being something like a, an outgoing person or a social person or something like that. I don't know, it's weird. I'm a very anti-social person. <laughs> I'm a very reclusive person. But, uh, yeah, just sitting here waiting at the, the TA. And I think that's about it for the video. Um, I have no idea when I'm going to leave the house. Um, but hopefully here in a minute we're going to have the trailer all in good order. I hope they check with me before they start working on shit. But I, I should end the video now so that I can monitor what they're doing because uh, the tech should be coming back from the roadside calls any minute and working on my truck or the trailer rather uh, but anyway uh, 22 minutes short video thanks for watching have a good one and bye